Greetings, greetings subscribers, viewers, prestige guests. Welcome to Extra Talk TV JA. Buying a laptop can be very tricky considering that you live in a third world country, especially if you live in Jamaica or other parts of the Caribbean. You might not have a lot of distributors that can actually sell you quality products and if you are not on the cashy side where you can ship your things from off amazon from maybe europe or the united states or if you have relatives overseas that can actually take these gadgets to you then your best bet is to invest your money properly before you go out and purchase a new laptop so in this video we'll cover some basics i mean there is a lot to talk about but we will discuss the main pointers things that you need to be aware of before you go into whether it is court singer atl or indian distributors to purchase yourself a brand new laptop so the first stop on this list is processors so we want to discuss what are processors and the types of processors that we need in our laptop as a university, college, or high school primary student. So the processor is actually the crucial part of the computer which carries out the instructions. In this time and age, the minimum amount of cores your laptop processor should have should be four. Now there are some exceptions to this because you do have some dual cores which are two cores which have four logical processors which act as if it's a four core processor these laptops are okay if you're going to be doing like school stuff if you're going to be writing essays doing some form of journalism or doing a little bit of productivity tasks with microsoft office but the moment you switch over to gaming or switch over to video editing or other forms of editing online or simply with a software you might struggle because the demand is not going to add up with the processing power that you have in that unit so my recommendation is the least amount of cores you should have it should be four cores now when we talk about four cores bear in mind that some cores are more stronger than others for example I would avoid laptops with Intel Celeron or Pentium. I would more suggest going with an i3 or an i5, depending on your budget. Um, I don't really have any issues with the Pentium, but to me, it's kind of outdated. It still gets the job done, but the Celeron for me is a no-no because sometimes under heavy loads, you know, it chokes when I talk when I talk about heavy loads I'm talking about you're listening to some music on YouTube um, you have a spreadsheet up you might have a video editing software running in the background you know and maybe you're doing some scans or some stuff like that then you would see a case where the PC starts to stutter because it can be the lack of RAM also and sometimes it can be that the processor is just not fast enough or powerful enough to process the instructions that you are giving to the computer. I'm not going to be sitting on here and telling you that Intel is better than AMD or AMD is better than Intel. I would say to you, get a processor that suits your budget. Because if you're going to be buying an Intel processor, sometimes it can be a little bit pricey compared to AMD processors. But if you get a laptop with an AMD processor, everything should be okay. As long as you don't try to overclock it or try to do something really crazy that you know that the laptop won't handle. RAM is very important for your computer. Although they might say 4 gig of RAM is recommended for Windows 11, I want to differ because for my pc that is a desktop it takes up like what 3.4 gigs of ram to run windows 11 and that's clearly not enough but thankfully i have 16 gigs of ram 
So if you're looking to get a laptop that's going to be fast and snappy to complement the performance of the processor, you should be looking to get somewhere upwards 6 to 8 gigs of RAM. So if the computer has 4 gigs of RAM, I'm going to tell you to stay clear from that computer. Because what will happen is over time when it starts to get a little bit slower, it is going to give you some stuttering. You know, things might just freeze on the screen because clearly whatever you're trying to do requires some more RAM. Plus it will start to be a case where the software on it will, will try to compete with Windows 11 to actually fight for the RAM. And that's when things start to freeze. Some computers are upgradable in a sense where you have slots where you can buy some RAM online and upgrade the computer. But to be honest with you, if you're going to buy a computer for $400 US, $350 to $400 US, it's a better case scenario to find the computer with 8 gigs of RAM to purchase it. Because then you don't want to purchase a computer for less. And then when it gets to Jamaica, you will have to go online and buy some more RAM to put in it to make it a little bit faster. That doesn't make any sense. So if you're going to buy it online or someone is going to take it for you, please get something with at least 8 gigs of RAM, especially if it has Windows 11 as the operating system. Audio. For audio, you want to have something that has a crisp sound, not something that is choppy or sounds a little bit off. Um, do check out the sound by actually playing some music on the laptop before you buy it. Ensure that your laptop has a nice little surround system going on maybe a 5.1 channel so that you will have some crisp audio also ensure that your laptop is loud because sometimes you buy a laptop and for most people they don't check the sound volume on the laptop until they have the laptop and they are asked to play something when they go to play something they realize that it's extremely low so ensure that on the day before you buy this laptop you check to see if it is loud and the quality of the sound coming from this laptop is fairly good to you. Screen size is just a preference for some. For me, 15.6 or 17.3 inches is okay. I mean, if you want to have a 14 inch screen, that's okay as well. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is the work that you do on the laptop, you will be able to access it. This one is oftentimes overlooked and that is the weight of the laptop. No. In my experience with this while at college, some students will have some really big laptops. You know, these laptops are, I would say, vintage laptops. They're actually good. But guess what? They weigh a lot. They would weigh like five, six pounds. And just imagine moving from one location on campus to another with your laptop plus all your books in your bag. You know, and maybe other things that you're carrying to class or taking from class. So it was really stressful. You need something that is lightweight, something that you can just pop in your handbag or pop in your knapsack or pop in your laptop bag and just move. You don't really need anything that is a burden to carry. Like for most students, they might carry the laptop on Monday and then probably not carry it back again until Thursday, Friday. You know, it's really stressful if it is heavy for some and um, that can put you at a disadvantage as you might need it throughout the day. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. I would suggest looking at a laptop that has a decent Wi-Fi adapter and a Bluetooth adapter as well because sometimes you buy these laptops and then when you take it home, they might not have Bluetooth installed. You maybe need to go and purchase a Bluetooth dongle or just simply purchase a Bluetooth adapter to install internally within the laptop. So please to check to see if the Wi-Fi is really um good for that laptop you know they will give you like a little description of the speeds that the wi-fi can actually um connect to and download at so that's really something good for you to know backlit keyboard now this one might seem a little bit over the top for many because they might not want to pay the additional 50 dollars for a backlit keyboard I can tell you from personal experience that this is bread and butter for all students going to school. This is bread and butter. Because let me tell you something. While everyone is sleeping, 
and it is peaceful in the wee hours of the morning, you can actually get up and do some work from the comfort of your bed because you would have a backlit keyboard. So you wouldn't have to turn on any light or wake up anybody or go borrow any um, phone light or lamp. All you need to do is just turn on the lights on your keyboard and right through the night you can work without anyone even noticing that you're working. Thank you for listening, my prestige guests, viewers, and subscribers. Stay tuned to this channel so that you'll be informed of our next video upload. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Walk good. Peace.